Okay, so for this example, we're asked to plot x as a function of time if the mass is released from rest when held 0.3 meters to the right of the equilibrium position. All right, so this is our diagram. We can see that our mass is connected to two springs and also a damper. And we're going to assume that as x as marked here oop, is going to be measured from equilibrium. So we're looking for x as a function of time, which means we can follow those five kind of steps that I had in the previous video, which looked at the equation. Um, so the first step is to draw a free body diagram of our block. Okay. So if we pull out the block, and we say it's going to move in the positive x direction as marked up here, that's going to mean that I'm going to dot it in the mass times acceleration term um, is going to be moving to the right. Okay, so if this is moving to the right, it's going to mean that our spring and our the springs and our damper are going to want to pull it back to where it was. So that's going to mean these two are going to pull back that way and same with the um, damper. So we know that the force in the spring is equal to, in this case, K1 multiplied by how far the block has moved because um, that's how far the spring is going to have stretched same for this one it will be k2x and we know that force in a damper is proportional to the velocity so this will be cx dot all right and i'm only going to mark in the forces in the direction i'm interested in or the direction of vibration um, so that's my free body diagram remembering that's the positive x direction so the next step that we're going to want to do is sum the forces on our diagram to be equal to the mass times the acceleration. So I have this one and these two going in the negative x direction. So that's going to mean on the left hand side it's negative cx dot minus k1x minus k2x. And this mx double dot corresponds to the mass times acceleration side. And since it's in the positive x direction, I'm going to put this in as positive mx double dot. Alright, so now it just becomes a case of re rearranging this equation to put it in the most suitable, useful form. So what I'm going to do is put everything on to one side of the equation. So that's going to leave me with 0 equals mx double dot plus cx dot, and I can put my k's together, so it'll be k1 plus k2 times x. Now what I want to do is I want to normalize the equation so that I get a 1 in front of the x double dot term. That's because the general form of my equation with omega n and zeta in it um, has a 1 in front of the x double dot term as well. So if I divide everything by m, I end up with that. And this is going to be suitable for trying to work out the next thing, which is omega n and zeta. So what we can say is our general form is equal to what we just found here. Okay. So what we have is that the 1 in front of the x double dot equals the 1 in front of that one. We know that 2 omega n zeta has to equal c on m, both the x dot parts, and omega n squared has to equal k1 plus k2 on m, both of them, of course, the x parts. So it's always going to be easier to solve for omega n first, um, and then moving back to finding zeta. So let's start with omega n. So omega n squared has to be equal to k1 plus k2 on m, rearranging, we get that. So we've got up the top here the different values that we're using, so substituting them in.
uh, it comes out to be 10 radians per second for the natural frequency. And now we can determine the damping ratio. So we know 2 omega n zeta has to equal c on m. So rearranging, we get that. And we said that up the top there that c was 60. And now that we've found omega n, we can substitute it in. And we end up with our damping ratio being equal to 1. Alright, so this corresponds to critical damping or critically damped case. So, now we just need to move on to the part where we actually solve for um, x as a function of time. And of course the general form of the equation depends on the damping ratio. So if you look back through your notes, you can find the equation that corresponds to that case. And of course it was in the equations um, video that I put up before this one. And you find that you need to fill in this form of the equation. Okay, so there's two unknowns that you need to find. One is A1 and one is A2. And of course you know your damping um, rate, uh, sorry, your natural frequency. So in order to fill this in, we need to know our initial conditions. And we need at least two, because we've got two unknowns in the equation. So if we scroll back up to the words, it tells us if the mass is released from rest, um, and it's held at 0.3 metres to the right, what's our equation? So we can get two things from this. One of them is we know that it's released from rest, so that means that at time equals zero, x dot, our velocity is zero. And also, at time equals zero, um, we know that it's held to the right, so x here is going to be 0.3 meters. So that's our two initial conditions that we can use. So we have at t equals zero, x dot equals zero meters per second. And at t equals 0, our position x is equal to 0 0.3 meters positive because it's to the right in the positive direction as we've defined it to be measured. So now we just need to work out um, what a1 and a2 are based off these two conditions. So the easiest one to use first is the one with x in it because our equation here is already in terms of x. So if we substitute 0.3 in here and time is 0, just put this in as omega n for now even though we already know it it's already it's going to cancel out so we have um, 0 0.3 is equal to so this is going to be a1 plus 0 so a1 multiplied by this is e to the power of 0 and anything to the power of 0 is 1 so it's basically a1 times 1 and that's going to mean that a1 is just equal to 0 0.3 so we know a1, now we just need to find a2, and we can get that from our second initial condition. However, this one is in terms of the velocity. So we're going to need to take the derivative of this equation um, in order to you know, use our velocity constraint. So taking the derivative of this equation, I'll do it out here. So we know that x has a derivative with respect to time, it's x dot. Alright, and we're going to have to treat this as a product rule um, situation. So the bracket here, we're going to treat as the first thing, which is u. And the exponent here becomes v for the product rule. So remember that the product rule looks like this. So you keep the first thing the same, multiply by the derivative of the second one. Keep the second one the same, multiply by the derivative of the first one. So, we're going to keep the first part the same. Multiply by the derivative of the exponent. Which looks like that. Plus, so we hold the second part the same, which is 
e to the negative omega nt and then multiply by the derivative of what's here which is just a2 so if we want to write this out a little bit neater we can Right, so that's what our equation for x dot looks like. And we're going to be able to use it now to be able to solve for the second unknown, which is a2. So this is our condition. We know that when t is 0, x dot has to equal 0. So we can put that in here now. So we know omega n is 10. Oh, sorry, A1 we know is 0 0.3. Plus A2 is what we're trying to find. So we end up with something that looks like this. So we've got 0 on the left here still. This simplifies to just be negative 10. E to the 0 is 1. Multiplied by, well, A2 times 0 goes away. So multiplied by 0.3 plus we have a2 multiplied by, again, anything to the power of 0 is 1. So what we find is a2 is just going to have to be equal to 3. So finally, we can plot this out. Um, just quickly write out the equation that we need to plot first. So it's equal to a1, which we found to be 0 0.3, plus a2, which is 3 times time, e to the negative 10t. Alright, so if we look at the plot, this is what it comes out from MATLAB. Um, you can see it starts at 0.3 metres as we expected and it's a critically damped case. So that means that it's going to approach that final value very, very smoothly. Um, it's not going to have any oscillations or anything like that. Alright, so that's the solution for this question um, and see you in the next video.